A biggest problem in, biggest problem review? I just like calling it the biggest review. It's like a it's like a name. But if it's biggest problem in there, then they know where to find our other show. Well, we're gonna plug the other show, so they're gonna know how to find it that way. Yeah. From a branding standpoint, the biggest problem review is a confusing title. Biggest problem That's a lot going reviews. on. Reviews. The biggest problem show reviews. I think so. I like the idea that someone's on YouTube and they say, "Oh, the biggest review of the Blue fuck Beetle. is a big review." Well, that's Bo- do you know Beetle. that guy Angry Joe? Yeah, every one of his videos is called the Angry Review. That's a of Incredible Hulk. That's a or whatever. description of a review. I know, and it's a, a really big good review. Format. Doesn't mean that's like an angry burger. <laughs> a big hamburger is good. An angry hamburger doesn't mean anything. Yeah, a bit, a, I think contrary I think, wise, I think the concept of a big review is like, oh, they're going to cover everything. They're going to get into it. Whatever, Vito. <laughs> Just call it whatever you want. Welcome to the biggest review of Blue Beetle. Let's party. Uh-huh, yeah! <laughs> nice choice. New from uh, the Warner Brothers Corporation 2023, an exciting action packed superhero movie. Action! 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 Are you going to. A hammer some La Cucaracha and stuff up at the beginning. Well, I'm, the Mexican hat dance I'm and stuff. I'm so glad that you came along because you're going to be my <gasps> Boys, I Mexican uh, culture consultant Jeez. on this one. I, yes. All right, real quick. I'm going to get. Can I say that on YouTube in the first? What? All the, all the cabron? Chingada. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Every I don't know any I've of these words. It. Chingada. Yes. <laughs> Hit him with it, Lopez. Hit him with it. The computer talked in Spanish. Boom. 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 <laughs> this movie, a very empowering movie for me. This movie is very Hispanic. It's a very Hispanic movie. Real quick, here's the synopsis. An alien scarab chooses college graduate Jaime Reyes. See, I didn't even know how to pronounce his name until well, after I watched this movie. You don't take a wind-up to say Jaime. <laughs> Jaime Reyes to be its symbiotic host, bestowing the teenager with a suit of armor that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers, forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero known as Blue Beetle, featuring Zolo Mara Duena as Jaime Reyes, Bruna Marzaquana Queen as Jenny Cord, George Lopez as Uncle Rudy, and a bunch of of other Mexicans. Also, Susan Sarandon, who I did not realize was in this movie. Yeah. That's always exciting, right? Yeah, she was an odd one, huh? It was a really odd standout. I guess they went, we need a white lady, an evil kind of racist white lady. It was the most, it was the most uh, believable villain I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> just a, just a mean white lady. Just a mean white <laughs> <laughs> who, who who basically who disrespects Mexican people? Uses the wrong name for a Mexican, and that's what costs her her <laughs> empire. Hey, you moron! What are you doing? My name is not Sanchez Pesca. This is being billed as the first major Hispanic superhero. I can't think of any others who would qualify. What about La Bamba? <laughs> I guess she's not a, I don't know. Richie Valens, not a... <laughs> Was that a superhero? La Bamba? Not at all. What about no. Rosie Perez from White Men Can't Jump? Sure. Surely she had some sort of Some sort of powers. This is being marketed by Warner Brothers as the Hispanic equivalent of Blue... Or, uh, sorry, of Black Panther. Black Panther gets to have a magic utopia created by black people... The Mexicans get a kid who finds an alien thing. They get family. Yeah, you get family. <laughs> Familia. <laughs> kind of feels like an insult to the Mexican community, but sure. Yeah. Uh, so this movie right now not tracking very well. I think that's part of the the, the people are dissatisfied with the DC Comics movies. Yeah. Empire. James Gunn is currently rebooting it from uh, ground zero, which puts this movie in an interesting place where uh, it doesn't really fit into the future of DC. James Gunn has kind of hinted like maybe he'll use this character, but also this character might just disappear, and this was like a pointless one-off movie. I thought it was a Marvel movie when we went there. Yeah. Because like it didn't have <laughs> Batman or Superman in it, so it- I thought we were going to see a Marvel movie. But then I thought, wait, this doesn't feel right. Something feels off. Yeah. And then they, I saw that LexCorp building, and I was like, oh fuck. Ted I'm Cord, in the wrong Cord Industry. Oh, was there a LexCorp building as well? Right behind that Cord one. I didn't know that. One. I didn't know nothing about the Blue Beetle. Okay. Yeah. This interestingly does feel like the most 
Marvel-esque movie that DC's ever put out. Yeah. Like, that whole, like, very family-friendly, like, overly family-friendly, very bright, very colorful, very safe. Yeah. Uh, If you're coming into this looking for the Justice League or Batman vs. Superman, like, there's no edge on this movie at all. Their problem is rent. That's like a Marvel <laughs> problem. Yeah. Right? They're getting evicted. They're getting evicted. That's not a D- DC problem is like a giant squid. Yes. Is, a giant a, doomsday weapon or a yeah. god from M- outer space. Again. No, this is uh, we're a victimized Mexican family just trying to get by. <laughs> you know what I love in this movie? How um, it reminded me of how in Indiana Jones, every time there was a little bit of adventure, the Indiana Jones theme song would kick on. Mm. But this, in the Mexican movie, it's just like Mexican songs. All Mexican music. <laughs> like, But every time there's like, where you think it would go like, da 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 it's like, da 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 Every time. Okay. I had a a note where I was like, okay, I think even Hispanic teenagers are listening to like rap music and what they're not all listening to. Every You're single wrong. song. Is that what the Hispanic kids are doing? <laughs> I'm like, no, Chanter they're listening big, to man. Drake or whatever the fuck else. No, they're listening. I don't know. It's no, your no, culture. No. You would know. We don't listen to that shit. All right. So for let's give real quick our general impressions, how we felt about this movie. Okay. To me, this movie is fine. Okay. Uh, I think my disappointment was that this is like a kid's movie, I felt. I was like, this is, feels like a movie... It feels like I'm watching Sky High. <laughs> I feel like I've been tricked into watching a movie aimed at White, like nine year olds. Because of the just because it's themes. like the themes are really just like generic. There's no nothing like edgy or like even style. Like the movie kind of lacked style. It felt like a Disney Channel movie to me. Yeah, I was gonna check the rating when when all those guys were. Well, it kind of stra- like the it randomly soldiers were going to execute right. people, and I was like, "That's very dark." But then he didn't kill them back, and I said, "Okay, well, that's very that's too light." Right. But then a bug, a giant machine, skewers a man through his yeah. chest, and, and I laughed out loud. And said, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, so I'm not the only one who can't figure out what yeah. the tone of this yes. is." This movie is very tonally inconsistent. Where you're like, "Oh, this is a fun, stupid kids movie." And then you're right, a robot literally stabs a man through his And then they're talking about, like, complicated, the way the U.S. government exploits. <laughs> There's like a montage of the government, yeah, just, like, bombing villagers. <laughs> yeah, like, a mo- a, someone's mom is incinerated by a, bom- by a bomber. Yeah, assumedly the American military bombed this village, and you got it. watch a guy's mom explode, and I'm like... Okay, tonally, this movie is a little all over the place. Oh my carnal. It's like 95% of it is a very, like, PG adventure. It's George Lopez. Like, yeah, it's George Lopez and Grandma, and the whole family's along for the ride. The movie's like and if then- George Lopez is getting high, and mm. then, like, he's being George Lopez, and then he's, like, on... Uh, uh, a methamphetamine and that's like talking about the real stuff about yeah. the US government and La Raza. I'm like alright man calm down let's get back to yeah. the, the jokes I don't know who the target market for this film is it's like kind of all over the place uh, I didn't hate it but it did feel again like this is a movie I would want to bring like my nephew to and go yeah it's fun to watch the, the bug fly around I didn't get it as an adult. I didn't get like anything meaningful out of it other than like, eh, I don't know. It looks you cool. You didn't get anything about family. We're making There's family Mexican family. again. That's what we're doing. I'll Taking this. it back from Fast and the Furious. Did you, you know, you were laughing at some parts throughout this movie. Uh, there was a lot of fun. Yeah, there was a lot of funny parts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the but Mexican I, family stuff is always funny to me. I, this, some I, of that I was laughing at, sure. I think you resonated with it more. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I think Hispanic. I have Uncle Chewies yeah. and nachos and exactly. stuff. Yeah. 
I mean, like, not to give the easy line, but if someone's like, should I see this? I'd go, well, do you come from a Hispanic family? If the answer's yes, I go, absolutely. <laughs> or are you have a fun. white lady? Or can you get behind yeah. just a bunch of people trying to take down a white woman, for what? God's sake? <laughs> Aren't they out of control? We got to do something about it. I, w- I was catching some of the references to, like, Hispanic culture. Like, doesn't she hold, like, Vicks VapoRub under his yeah, fucking nose Yeah, at my one grandma point? would do that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right. Or she, like... <laughs> The daughter is like freaking out. She has her suck on a lemon wedge or something. Yeah, that was. Is that some a Mexican of them were a little. Some of those are a little more like grandma having a baggie of lemon wedges <laughs> aboard <laughs> aboard the, the spaceship. Retro futuristic blue beetle. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a stretch. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is that this movie again felt like a kids movie because there's a lot of stuff where I have to suspend my disbelief, like. Why are we bringing grandma on the adventure? That seems yeah. okay. Why does grandma hold a mini gun? Like, okay, <laughs> it's funny. Bust it down, bust it down. Nana? I advise me back away. Ah! And there's like brutal torture also. <laughs> right. like, <It's>, ah. <laughs> that doesn't fit with the chain gun wielding grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this movie is tonally all over the fucking map. Uh, I mean, obviously, my That's pre- Mexico, man. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Kind of, you know it what? It is. is Mexican culture. It's a little, it's all over the place. So I'd say ultimately, you know, I'm a little disappointed that I came out of this and it, it went. felt authentico. I guess it was a little too like, again, all the themes of like, it's about family. Family is the forced, most important. Right? So forced. They were forced. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> if this was like, you know, a six year old kid who's never seen those kind of forced morals, it'd go, yeah, this is great for you. You like. Pa, you know, before the movie started, there was a bunch of like promos for Trolls and Paw Patrol, and I was like, "Oh, this is like a kids' movie." Okay, uh, they kids put, will they love put this. a trailer of Paw Patrol against a trailer for The Conjuring Three. <laughs> that was so. Really- I was like, "Oh, this is going to be another <laughs> madcap romp," and then there's that nun with dead eyes staring. Like, oh, what the hell is this? I was really confused. <laughs> when I pretended to look down at the popcorn so I wouldn't see it again. I'm like, oh, I hope Vito doesn't notice me. Not, I'm not going to close my eyes, even though I want to, but I'm not seeing that again after Paw Patrol. <laughs> that, that was, and it's kind of a perfect summary of this movie is that it was all these previews for like these very kid friendly things, and then randomly there's a conjuring there's, trailer. And I'm like, if there's any kid in this audience, he's going to be scarred by that. That was horrifying. It's like a goofy suit that's like goofing around, and then like your dad's. Dead. Having a heart yeah. attack on screen, <laughs> and the mom is screaming at someone to help. I'm like, yeah. this is way too close for a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> That's like a common way that people die. Don't put it in the front yard uh, in the movie. The movie could have used some trigger warnings for those of us who like, have... Uh, you lost don't see it. Mufasa die. He just <laughs> falls, and then you say he died. It, it happens he elsewhere. Go, oh, I'm getting <laughs> mangled and messed up. <laughs> yeah, that part of the movie where they try to resuscitate dad was a bit much. Uh, so my, again, generic thoughts, my overview is yeah. tonally inconsistent. Going to be great for kids, great for uh, Hispanic families. If you're looking for like a more robust a Ital- white Italian person and you want something more sophisticated well, like, go to the opera I like you know? okay I'll say this I like Merchant of Venice is no, more I'm for not you. saying that <laughs> look there's some of these superhero movies that are you know dumb fun yeah but I think they uh have a bit more something going on uh I'd say this is definitely better than something like an Ant-Man 3 I don't know if you saw that that was another one of these that was like, trash yeah that was absolutely unwatchable trash. so this was like definitely way uh, this was way more watchable than that for a DC movie. Yeah, it was incredible. Oh yeah, well DC's just you been know? fucking up like crazy. But there so. wasn't like people just staring <laughs> off like they're gonna cry. Yeah, well, like okay, man. I liked the. I don't. I didn't like this as much as the Flash though, and I liked the Flash. I don't know if you got to see the Flash yet. Uh, where there he goes back in time and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I that I really could barely get through that. Really, I enjoyed that movie better than Blue Beetle. Yeah, uh, I thought that struck the right tone of. Goofy, lighthearted, but then gets kind of serious, and there's like, you yeah. know, kind of an emotional core to it. This was like all goofy all the time. Very it much. It was fun. Yeah. I wish they had committed to more tone. I wish they had told the story a little bit differently, which we can get into. Yeah. Uh, I wish they had hit beats a little bit harder with like the, you know, f- with the, with their balls. I think and the comedy could have been a little more. 
like so occasionally they would like get a little edgy. George Lopez would be like doing a, saying a little, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, you got George Lopez. Like, just let him go nuts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like at the end, okay, I'll, I know I'm skipping ahead, but at the end of the movie, the scarab makes a little joke where it's like, I, I've sensed, you know, he's like about to kiss I the sense girl. You have an erection. I sense, yeah, basically, I sense you have an erection. I feel a surge of blood rushing towards your mid region. Stop. <laughs> I'm like, why weren't you doing that the whole movie? You could have been doing all sorts of little jokes with the robot saying dumb shit. The symbiote relationship between the Blue Beetle and the, the machine that he's wearing, which is like an alien technology. Yes. There's a lot of mi there's a lot of missed Venom opportunities for that. Uh, because it's in total yeah. control of him at all times. So this they didn't really play into this movie that. is missing a character, and that character is the, the scarab. Suit. Like the yeah. suit needed to be yeah a way bigger part of this movie. It w it should have been interacting with the family, talking to the family, whatever else. Yeah. It just seems like so obvious as I'm watching it. As I'm like, wait, he's bonded to a living alien symbiote. Give it personality and have it talk. It should learn. And it fails, ultimately. So yeah. there's, I mean, there should be, there should have been a lot of arrogance to knock out of it by that point. You know what this movie needed? If you're going to make the big stupid moral is it's all about family, you know who needs to learn that moral? The Scarab. <laughs> Yes. Like that would have yeah. been way yeah. better if the robot's like, I can make you ultimately <laughs> I don't powerful. Have any I energy. Don't, yeah. I've got family energy. <laughs> Wait, what and then is Mufasa, this? His dad yeah. appears in the clouds and goes, Mijo. <laughs> this movie was written wrong. You needed the, the scarab to be constantly telling him, You're your own man. You're a one man army. Like, I'm going to empower you, whatever yeah. else. He's like, No, I need my, my family. Familia. I need familia. Forget them. Yeah. And instead, the scarab basically says nothing the whole movie. It's like a complete. Missed opportunity. It's like a Jarvis that's not funny. Yes. And that's not This movie good. is Iron Man 1 yeah. in so many ways. That's what I was comparing it to while we were watching I'm it. I'm watching it. I'm like, oh my God, this movie is just like a kind of not as good Iron Man 1. Yeah. And specifically when the way in Iron Man, when they set up that uh, uh, the Big Lebowski is a bad guy at the beginning. Yes. And then he betrays him and Tony Stark uses that icing problem against him. Yes. I was waiting for anything that they could do to approach that but it never happens it never has he anything just clever beats or whatever. the guy's ass yes because of the power of me familia and also as i was watching this and that villain is like meaningless he has like no reason to be there i was going just put susan sarandon in the mech suit yeah that's your solution. She yeah. doesn't need a Mexican guy to wear the mech suit. Just if it was if it was the kid fighting Susan Sarandon in this movie is Obadiah Stane. She is the evil yeah. wants to make the company a weapons manufacturer. I know then it just is Iron Man one, but like But they needed the part to show that Mexicans are taken advantage of and exploited <laughs> which i which i liked i like the i like that the that the movie also said uh the u.s government is evil yes and tortures and kills brown people sure i like that part like those parts but <laughs> there's a lot of that could have been it could have been done of more of that all right well let's go through this movie you want to go through this movie front to back yeah sure recounting this is the spoilers part right this is the spoilers part and we've had a couple little spoilers that's why here, the review is so big that's why it's so big <laughs> we cover it all it's the biggest review shut up this is good branding this is good it's not. it is it's not good branding i saw one guy like really leave a review on the last one he's like i don't see how this is the biggest review because it's not <laughs> it's the biggest problem reviews <laughs> okay, look, in the comments right now, tell us what you think this should be called. All right, beginning of the movie, Jaime Reyes uh, comes home. He's been at college, went to Gotham Law, we see on his sweatshirt at one point. Oh, I missed that. Oh, did you? That would have been it. I would wish I would have known yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was a good little call there. So he's yeah. the first person in his family to go to college, the classic Hispanic classic Mexican dream. thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> comes home and sees his whole family. His family consists of his Kind of rib tickling sister, always giving him guff. Yeah. Mother and father. He's got a loving grandmother and uncle. Oh God, what was his name? Rudy, I think. Uh, played by Rudy, George, Lopez. George Lopez. Yes. Who hates the government. Who hates the government. Great. Interestingly, that was actually a big problem for a lot of the anti woke community. Do you remember the joke where he goes, Batman's a fascist, man? <sighs> It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. I just wanna rap. Yeah. A lot of people got really mad and they said, oh, this movie's woke because it's calling Batman a fascist. I'm George like, Lopez would. No, he George does Lopez think is. That. Yeah. Like, <laughs> his character and George Lopez probably in real life is like a paranoid anti government, whatever the fuck, conspiracy then, theorist. Uh, Batman is a fascist. Well, right? I don't wanna go down that is he route. Not? 
it, he could make a very reasonable argument. He enforces the he laws enforces of the law. state. Yeah, without like the. Uh, I'm not familiar with the types of crimes he stops or all of he them. He stops robbery, violent and ones? drug. Oh. Well, he's he you know he would stop drug dealers and stuff. He's fascist then, it's a bro. Bit fascist. I got bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've moved away from that in uh, recent years. But I'm sure he was stopping huh. junk from coming into the city. So Jaime comes home. Uh, he meets with his family and learns the unfortunate reality that uh, because the city is gentrifying under the watchful eye of Cord Industries, a uh, yeah. giant corporation Lex of sorts. Corp competitor. The Lex, yeah, like Lex Corp. Yeah. Uh, property values are going up. Their rent is about to triple and the family is going to lose their home. Uh, very sad. And uh, this they takes, don't really seem that bothered by it, though. Did well, you notice that? Like, they, I didn't. Yeah, the dads ever, are just like, I will get by. That it's Hispanic resilience. No matter what, our people will overcome. We're always doomed. We have a lot to be grateful for. Um, but then I kind of felt like nothing about it. Like, okay, they're getting kicked out. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, they were a little. They were like a little sad. But you're right. It wasn't. Maybe it should have been more of a. Oh God, we really got to figure this out. Yeah. And this is, takes place in a fictional kind of Miami kind of town, it felt like. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Miami. It's Miami. <laughs> they, they call it like sand something. I don't fucking know. They pronounce it Miami. Miami. Yeah. Yes. So this is a town filled with poor, destitute Hispanics just trying to have a good time well, and the white man. Like, I thought if the, one, the one thing that the movie should have done is shown more of a wealth inequality between... These like the keys that they called them, mm -hmm. which was the barrio, the poor people area, yeah, and the rich people area. But the poor people area was like spotless. They always do that in movies. That, that, for some reason, these movies have a lot of trouble like accurately showing poverty. So they're like, yeah. well, their house has like some like the paint job isn't that nice, and you're like, it's not like a guess. decent house, seems, man. Seems fine. <laughs> Rudy's got a boss ass truck oh, that yeah. he's driving around in. He's making complicated electrical machinery, but he didn't go to college. This only this guy did. All right, whatever. Dick, they're a destitute people just struggling to survive in this horrible, horrible uh, white controlled world. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Uh, I didn't like the the sister. I, I thought we were in trouble in the first part of the movie, like yeah. the first ten minutes. With that sister, like yeah, way over the top, talking about taking big poops and stuff. Oh it's yeah, like every line. The service restrooms right there. Yeah, and I deserve a luxury dump right now. All right, that's how I was. I know bad, what they were trying man. to do, and I think it probably worked in the script. The actress was not nailing it in terms yeah. of like the humor. Yeah, you know she's constantly on her brother's case. So uh, Artie Lang would have been good for that role. Artie Lang? Yeah, they get to put a wig on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need someone to be roasting. Yeah, he already might be a little too old to be playing the Hispanic si uh, teenage sister. Use your imagination. But I, I understand the uh, yeah, what kind of uh, character you're looking for there. Yeah. So Jaime decides, uh, you know, we're gonna save this family. I'm gonna get a job. Somehow they get a job cleaning at Mrs. Cord's mansion. It seemed like. Excuse me, Mr. Reyes. You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Uh, or resort or there something? There was a lot of plot contrivances that were like a little too much. Like, okay, sure. He just happens to work for the villain of the movie. Fine. Why not? That's uh, what the story's about. Yeah. There's yeah. A, there's some contri more contrivances we'll get into. Again, this is a great kids movie. If you're an adult, you're like, eh, that's kind of some lazy fucking writing, but sure. Yeah. Uh, and as they are cleaning up the resort, they see Mrs. Cord, who runs this uh, evil corporation arguing Susan with Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon, <laughs> yes, arguing with her niece. Uh it's like a hot Mexican girl. Yes, who is the daughter with this weird speech impediment that I couldn't get the whole movie. The the daughter? Uh the love the, interest. The love interest? She had some kind of a speech. She was like Brazilian, I guess, which is yeah, I never heard someone talk like that. <laughs> Plus, so this was my father. Mm, do you have a retainer in by chance? <laughs> she was there. She was very generic love interest. Yeah. Again, none of these characters were really standouts for me. Like nobody I know I didn't come out of this movie going, oh, I loved this particular character. So the conflict is Susan Sarandon is in charge of Court Industries because the actual guy who runs Cord Industries, Ted Cord, a.k.a. the second Blue Beetle, for those of you who read the comics, yeah. has gone missing. 
His daughter, Jenny Cord, has arrived to confront Susan Sarandon and say, what are you doing with my dad's company? You are clearly trying to turn it into a weapons manufacturer, which I am very opposed to. Susan yeah. Sarandon tells her, you don't know what you're talking about. Susan Sarandon also has a... Uh, Cyborg. Yeah, has a cyborg like a henchman. One. Yeah, that she's like slowly... Uh, apparently, this is a guy who's like lost his limbs or something. She's been building him up using the US this technology. Blew off his limbs. Yes. Well, in the third world, <laughs> <laughs> I think he stepped. I think we see him step on a landmine or something as a child, or the and missiles. And the alien or reads his mind and tells us this. Yes. We'll get there. We're I guess. gonna get there. No, there's a lot. That that scene was see, a, a lot, lot happened in this movie. It's great. <laughs> there's there's stuff to like. It's I don't know if it's great is how I would describe it. Regardless, cyborg bodyguard is about to punch Jenny Cor the love interest mm -hmm. and Jaime Reyes steps in and goes hey hey don't you punch her oh leave her alone I'm just a goof I'm just a goofy guy <laughs> and uh okay that's his character that yeah. gets him and his sister fired from working at this sure, yeah. uh, mansion but the very nice Jenny Cord goes listen I feel bad that you know you tried to intervene I, I got you fired she didn't do that right away though that was kind of annoying to me yeah, she, kind of, she waited <laughs> she waited a little bit too uh, long ah well she meets him outside she goes Here's my number. Come on by the cord building. Maybe mm -hmm. I can get you a job. Yeah. All right. Which sets him up to then go to the cord building for his big meeting with uh, Jenny Cord. Uh, that's where he gets the. But what's the a little scarab. well, what's a little strange is she's like, why did she tell him to come and meet her tomorrow if she knew the next day she was going to be in, doing a little bit of industrial sabotage and trying to steal. I don't know. A yeah, <laughs> that feels like she planned badly. Like, hey, come meet me at the building. Maybe I can get you a job. Also, tomorrow's the day I'm planning on stealing the magic alien scarab yeah. that is powering this weapons program. So uh, we see her steal the scarab. Uh, she's on her way out of the building when they try to lock it down. Security's rushing around, uh -huh. and Jaime's there. And he goes, well, you said you'd you, you're going to give me a job, right? I'm a goofy guy. You're going to give me a job. And she goes, here, take this Take this take box. This bo hamburger. Yeah, it was a fast food box. Take it. Make sure you don't open it, and I'll get back to you later. Yeah. I don't understand how she didn't. She had his number. Why not text him two seconds later and be like, listen, I'll be at your house in literally 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch anything. But well, what are you, uh, whatever. You know, I know. The, the movie has to happen. Thing. What the do you want? That's what happen. I, it feels like they just needed to nitpick. take a little bit of time yeah. through everything and, and then punched it up a little bit. I feel like this script is, uh, again, it's a very obvious first. Mm -hmm. There's stuff from the first draft still in there where, like, it goes, well, we can't just have him keep saying family is what makes me powerful. Clearly, we'll come up with a better line <laughs> at some point. <laughs> love that I have for my family. That's what makes me strong. And uh, that did <laughs> not, yeah, that, that never happen. happened. No. <laughs> there is a lot of that. There's a lot I of didn't that. get how, when they, when the girl decided to help him out and they went to the, her house, the billionaire, mm -hmm. and her father was actually, I was very confused. I feel like they should have said a lot of stuff up front. So I wasn't going like, well, why did they want, what were they doing with this thing the yeah. whole time? Her so father was the actual Blue Beetle, who was Batman, who yeah. made a bunch of his own crab, who made a bunch of his own superhero gadgets. Yes. To, and he also was obsessed with a real-life mystical alien beetle that gave <laughs> you superpowers. Okay, so... It's a little bit odd. Yeah, uh, this is so. This is interesting. So I know the Blue Beetle uh, uh, mythos. Clearly, you don't, you don't know this guy at all. It no. sounds like no. What's uh? Have you ever watched? You've seen Watchmen. You've read Watchmen. Yeah. So Blue Beetle was the inspiration for Night Owl. I figured that. Yeah, you probably saw some yeah. similarities there. That's worth mentioning. Uh, but Blue Beetle is a old legacy character. I want to say going back to like the you know Superman days, right? Okay. The original Blue Beetle was a guy with a magic alien scarab, mm -hmm. and the magical alien scarab gave him some sort of powers. Uh, at some point, that guy retired or something else. I don't remember. And that's when Ted Cord took over as Blue Beetle. Oh. He had the scarab. Like, he had it, uh -huh. but he couldn't figure out how to make it work. Okay. So he just kind of, like, had it sitting around. So he's just Batman then. He just became, like, yeah, like, he's like Night Owl in Watchmen. He's, okay. like, a schlubby, pathetic Batman. Okay. Who's kind of funny. <laughs> he's a great character, honestly, and I love the second Blue Beetle. But he uh, was also... In the 90s, in this movie. Yes. Which was odd. Yes. He was... <laughs> 
<laughs> it, it made it very clear he was like operating in the 90s as yeah because he had an a, area 51 arcade game there yeah like, i know exactly what round table i mean did in. you notice that her gauntlet was a nintendo power glove yeah i'm sure that didn't get past you and see that's another thing i then when the 80s stuff started i was like well why didn't they lean into the 80s stuff the whole movie that would have been great yeah but it would have been cool if it was all like 80s weird tech that this guy had built yeah i don't know how well it was established to the audience who yeah this whole blue beetle mythos and it is complicated that there's two previous blue beetles yeah and did they have the alien they don't really explain that well enough no, and they don't explain why the the blue beetle at the beginning susan sarandon pulls it up and it's like in this perfect sphere of concrete yeah do we ever I learn thought, what is why the, and why is that missing or like why it was buried it. under the earth yeah so i guess and there was also no there was no like say do this or something bad's gonna happen like i get that they were gonna make a bunch of blue beetles and that they were they looked like jerks but that's true we did they don't raise like, the stakes enough they don't establish what happens if so susan sarandon's plan is we're going to take the beetle synthesize it and make these you know technological versions of it so yeah. we can turn soldiers into like murder machines yeah but it's like which would be well yeah what's well, wrong with the u.s they're gonna be having a bunch anyway. of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like why is that bad <laughs> Like, you have to establish, like, and it's going to take away their souls, or I'm going to use it to take over the planet, or... Something. Something bad. It's going to destroy this... You, you, you should have said, and we're going to use it to nuke Mexico, and then it's like, yeah. oh, no! <laughs> I do Yeah, we well, needed that. <laughs> All right, we're, we're far off track. So, takes the scarab home. The whole family has him open the box. Obviously, yeah. the scarab chooses Jaime Reyes, uh, attaches itself to him, and makes him into the Blue Beetle. Yeah. Uh, which then is followed up by a scene and he that. He goes cuckoo bananas. He goes flying yeah. <laughs> around everywhere. Okay, so that part of the movie, I went like, oh, this like sucks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the part where he first gets attached to the suit, I'm like, this is your chance to like have some fun, come up with some gags. And the gags are like, oh no, I'm falling. Oh no, I can't control this thing. And I'm like, I'm oh, resetting. I'm yeah. doing a test. Ah. Like, yeah. Again, it's Iron, Man, it's Iron Man 1. It's Iron Man 1. He's in the suit for the first time. He's knocking over all of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, in Iron Man, like, nailed it. It's like you have to show the suit. Three, two, one. You know, and then he, like, tries to push it too hard, and again, the, the yeah. ice builds up on the thing. So, uh, Shazam did a good power discovering thing too yeah because he was a kid trying to learn how to you know zap and right right, right. it was fun it's like oh yeah let's get accustomed to your powers they didn't do that at all no like the, this movie. the big gag is a bus is coming towards him and he uh turns on his shield and cuts the bus in half which is very dangerous <laughs> yeah which <laughs> could have just killed a that's shit such a of dc as soon as that started i was like there's nothing more dc than this scene which is weird yeah. and it would be it's very reckless. Yeah, I saw violent. a lot of people be like, well, that's not heroic. And I want to be like, well, I don't know. I guess the alien's in control, and thank God no one got hurt. And yeah. then there's like three stoners on a bench, and they go, oh, I don't know if this is hitting, man. Has your miscellaneous <laughs> drugs that we can't say <laughs> kicked in yet? No, bro. Has your drug of choice kicked in yet? I don't know, bro. <laughs> this movie had a is lot. Is it mushrooms or is it acid? I need to know. <laughs> say Show which one them, it is. Put it on their tongue. You probably can't do that in a PG movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this movie had a lot of scenes from other mo I swear that's, I don't know what, obviously that joke yeah. is in other movies. And then, you know. Has it kicked in yet? He cut, yeah. Has it kicked in, and then yeah. they cut through the bus. I think it's working, <laughs> man. All right, that, that joke was written by AI. All right, so now he's trapped inside the suit. And and he's all pissy about it. He is very, no, like, yeah. it's not disfiguring. Well, he finds makes him out, invincible. That, com that comes a little later. So, uh. This uh, girl, Jenny Cord, comes mm -hmm. to confirm, okay, now you're bonded to the scarab. Well, I can get it off of you. Now he wants it off of him. We need to go to Cord Industries to get the key. Yeah. The key being a, a wristwatch. Now, I had to go to the bathroom real quick. Did I miss? It seemed like I was not going to miss anything. They go back. I didn't want to get more out of the movie than you, so I closed my eyes and plugged my Shut ears. Up. Uh, <laughs> he just fights the, the Mexican cyborg guy, right? Yeah, he fights the Mexican cyborg that so has I a missed... leaf blower on one arm. Okay. So I missed a lot of that fight, but it seemed like that character is pointless anyway. Was that yeah. fight good? No, no. She just They went and got the watch so that they could go to her dad's house, yes. right? Yes. Her billionaire house. They needed her dad's watch to, uh, to unlock uh, 
the original Blue Beetle secret basement. So they go to this mansion, the original Blue Beetle mansion, which should be covered in that heroin needles and in, homeless people. Yeah. <laughs> There's still shit all it's over the wall. Like, flamingos I'm like, how for has, some reason. Yeah, how have and all the copper not been ripped out of the walls? It's just been sitting here for 20 years? Come on. Uh, that should have been at the beginning. Some idea that there is this guy. And then I remembered at the beginning credits, they showed a picture of the... Yes. Uh, the old school Blue Beetle. Yes. And I was like, well, what? that's weird. Who's What's that, that guy? guy? Yeah, so this movie, like, if you know the Blue Beetle stuff, because I was watching the open credits, I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's Ted Cord, and that's all that Like, you were just like, what the what fuck the is hell all is this? that? Yeah. Yeah. Ted Cord had a bunch of... Ted Cord hid the scarab in giant concrete balls for some reason, and then I guess this and lady And in the beginning them. of the movie, it showed the scarab coming from space. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was just a cool effect or... I it, guess that it was, was from space. It, it did look cool, but I think that was taking place inside the con- whatever. It was just a dumb <sighs> yeah. special effects sequence. So they go down in the basement. The basement has a bunch of cool 90s stuff, mm-hmm. an Area 51 machine. George Lopez, who's the tech guy of yeah. this movie, uh, boots up the computer and goes, Oh, that thing's just like linked in your brain. There's forever. no way to remove it. Yeah, forever. So they didn't need to do any of this. Stuff. No, I guess uh, not really. And for some reason, like that's when Jaime gets like like really, really mad. That hurt. Yeah. Maybe what, Rudy? It's all bad news. Okay, this shit just doesn't get any better for us. I don't understand why you can't. God. Like, I kind of get it, but the reaction was, like, over. He's like, oh, so this thing's stuck on me forever. And I'm like, well, you've not explained, like, why. Like, why, why you like that? Yeah, what is bad about it? You need like, to, like. Even, like, you're endangering your family, maybe. Maybe you have this meltdown because something bad happened to your family. But no, or it's you just, like, to it's have, attached to you. Okay, well, the way to do it would be during that fight scene, like, somehow it's causing harm to him. Or there should be, like, a hint that it's, like, hijacking him. Causing psychosis here's, and Okay, stuff. here's the way to yeah. do it, is you go, it's gonna, this thing's gonna take me over, I'm not gonna be me anymore, and then by the end of the movie, they learn to coexist, and he yeah. doesn't have that fear anymore. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, other than that, it's just kinda like, I have superpowers, and I can fly! <laughs> I hate and this! I fucking, I'm so <laughs> mad about this! Get away from me, George Lopez! <laughs> and meanwhile, George Lopez is like, I don't understand, this is like clearly awesome, why are you mad? <laughs> so that was a little- And then there was the worst incident instance of cock blocking I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, that was pretty intense. Oh, man. Hey guys, I found something that's cool. No, he Her mom died. She couldn't act very well, but mm. very erotic. It was actress. Honestly, that and that end kiss that they had, I was like, what the? This dude, isn't for kids at all. Exactly. It's like she's about to mount him on this on this Ducati. I have not out of all these superhero movies, the romance is always like kind of cute and playful. Like, he, yeah, let white. Me kiss you. This was like she was like about to like crawl all over this motherfucker and like, like wow, man, jam her hand down his pants. I'm like, <laughs> he's going, he's trying to hide his erection after he almost kissed her. I was like, that's not appropriate either. I don't know why this movie felt so. Their relationship felt way more erotic than the like playful <laughs> yeah. romance of these other the Mexicans, movies. man. I think it kind of was. So yeah. here's another uh, again, a little bit of lazy writing. They go up on the roof. Why did yeah. they did they go up on the roof? He went up on the roof to talk to them. They have a little heart to heart. Yeah. So he goes up on the roof and then his uncle goes, Everything's fine, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna be great. We're Mexicans. We're gonna make Mexico work. We love Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh at that okay, then the stupidest thing happens, which is a helicopter flies overhead. Directly overhead. Directly over the mansion. Toward his house. Towards his house. And I'm well, like, towards that way. Yeah, towards that way. <laughs> and they go, Oh, that helicopter's going to your house. I'm like, and it just happened to fly directly over the mansion. Where are they going? Home. So many other ways. Dude, to just have a phone call like, <laughs> yeah. hey, Jaime, something's, something's going gone, on at the something's house. Something's going on. Yes. Uh, if you don't hear from me, click. Oh, oh no. my God! We have to get in back. Trouble, not it's- like a giant <laughs> sign that's dr- flying right at. That was like video game riding. That was like, well, yeah. Uh, having the helicopter go directly over the mansion <laughs> and having him immediately go. And then that's her helicopter. She's going to my house. Then is probably the most uncomfortable five or six minutes of a paramilitary group storming an illegal family's house. Yes. 
like their INS. I know, you, s- dude. I made a joke. I turned to you. I said, "Oh, it's like Elian Gonzalez." And then they actually went into the house <laughs> and had the whole family at gunpoint. I'm like, "Oh shit, they are just doing Elian Gonzalez right and now." It was so unnecessary. <laughs> then they they pin the entire family in the middle of the house, like <laughs> on it's their wo- knees, like it's World War Two. Yes, and they're about to like aiming guns at them to <laughs> test the blue. Be- it, it, tonally, so they're gonna murder the fam. They're gonna execute the family. Susan Sarandon Sarandon says has instructed her soldiers who are regular guys (laughs) to execute this clear, this old, a helpless Mexican family. Okay. Who they've probably gone to have their car fixed at. Okay. So that's a very, that's a very good point because we're talking about this idea. Like they needed to raise the stakes on why they need to stop this lady. Just make it clear that it's turning these soldiers into like, Evil, fucked up, brainwashed, evil psychopaths. Yeah, because normal yeah. guys would not. I mean, I don't think they would just do that. I don't think they would at least randomly. Going yeah. like, well, we're Mexicans. We're not. We're not doing. No, we're not. We're definitely not doing that. If you <laughs> added the scene where it's like, listen, we have, we, we, we got half, taken over their brains. Yeah, we've taken over their brains. We have half yeah. the scarabs data, and you know, one of them should go. I don't know if we can just kill this family. And Susan Rand is like, you fucking override. idiots. Override. Yeah, override, and they yeah. just their eyes glow red. <laughs> Okay, that would have been like infinitely better instead of just well, they're they're military guys. Of course they'll just of kill anyone. Of course they're gonna kill that. <laughs> execute the family. So then he defends his family, right? right? But then his suit. Then he tells the suit not to kill the guys, mm. mirroring like the Terminator Two. You remember in Terminator no, Two? And he's like, kill. don't yeah, kill him. Yeah. But I'm thinking, those guys were just fi- unloading clips into your family. You're right. really not at all. You're not, you're okay, you're not a vengeful guy, right? Uh, I but hit, then at yeah. the end, he straight up executes his rival and is stopped only at the last minute by the by the robot. Well, he's been it's pushed to the edge. The he's been pushed to the edge. I will say this. I'm tired of the I can't kill because I'm a superhero, like, default rule. I thought that was just because it was, like, PG or something. PG-13. Well, yeah, I didn't I mean, know, that, though. That is why. I just assume. But it's like, if you're going to have that as a rule for your hero, you can't just assume the audience knows that. Yeah. Like, the movie wants you to assume, oh, well, he's a good guy. He can't kill. It's like, yeah. no, you need some scene early on where the grandma says, like, you know, oh, and never strike with vengeance, you know, if or those whatever. Guys, if those soldiers were being mind-controlled, that's a good reason not to kill them. Yeah. Because they can't help it. You need a reason, but the fact that he's just like, no, we can't kill. Like, like uh, why why was John Connor like, don't kill? Well, John Connor was like, don't kill them because they're innocent guys. Like, he made a point. Yeah. Just put up your hand and say, I swear I won't kill anyone. I swear I will not kill anyone. He actually said, like, listen, yeah, you can't just kill guys. Back in the 90s, cops were seen as good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, now, honestly, for a modern age, it's like, well, those guys are basically cops. Go nuts. Uh, But anyway, he's not allowed Uh, to kill because of some personal code that he has never explained. Yeah, Uh, and then then, his father dies of a heart attack in his front yard. While he watches, tied up in Susan Sarandon's Susan helicopter. Uh, yeah, Susan Sarandon shoots uh, the Blue Beetle with a, an incapacitating claw. So he's stuck on the ground watching his father suffer a deadly heart attack. <laughs> Which is uh, too much. <laughs> it was, okay, so like, I when the father started having the heart attack, did you hear the sound effect? Of the like the flat line, <laughs> yes. the medical flat line. And I laughed because <laughs> I was like, hold on, that's not like a thing you just hear in real life. And then I kind of justified it in a way where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume the blue beetle suit for some oh, reason. Oh, to be like Yeah, he's tracking Bumblebee her. from sure. Transformers <laughs> making sounds. <laughs> but I'm like be funny. Is that really what we're doing in movies now? If somebody kills over a heart attack, you just add the beep regardless of the situation. No, you have to be in the hospital for that. You can't just have that sound effect. I think we understood. Oh yeah, my no, heart. I didn't need the <laughs> the flat line. That was a little excessive. Uh, so, and then there's like a weird, it's like a weird, uh, editing sequence of like the flashing police sirens and mom crying. There's a lot of weird directing. Yeah. Uh, just the way that Susan Sarandon would speak up at characters, mm -hmm. I thought was weird. Ordinarily, the bad guys speak down to their, their, their henchmen and stuff, but they- I guess they wanted to like establish that she's like- 
even though she's a small lady, she has all this power. They didn't want her to seem imposing, I guess. But they can put her, I mean, they put her up on stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, that was an interesting choice. But yeah, that scene where the dad has a heart attack, it definitely started getting creative with the editing. And it just felt, there's a couple parts where it gets creative with editing. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't think this is the time to try and yeah. show off your style or whatever. Just get yeah. back to your stupid Disney Channel movie or whatever. The dad was a great actor. Yeah. I like that. No, he was that, very believable. Yeah, he was good. Uh, out of the whole family, you like the dad. Yeah, the dad does a yeah. good job of being likable. When he dies, you're like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. What do you think of the kid playing Blue Beetle? Again, he felt to me like... He's okay. It felt like they didn't give him anything to do other than react yeah. in the most obvious ways. Like, okay, you're in a suit and you're really like, oh my God. Like it just, again, constantly like just reacting to, whoa, what's going was, on? Like it was close to the, to the rocketeer, you know, I, I yeah. forget who that guy was, but he at least came up with plans. The blue beetle, beetle didn't really do anything. Well, I think about got, get, got caught. I, I was started comparing him on my head to uh, who plays Spider-Man now, whatever that kid's name is. Andrew Garfunkel? No, that's the last one. Miles Morales. No, that's the black one. His name is Tom Holland. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Tom Holland is Spider- This is also, we say it's a lot like Iron Man 1. It's also a lot of Spider-Man. It's like the teenage superhero. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got problems. He's nervous around girls or whatever There's else. There's not really much to him. The character. No, there's like, no. I don't like, really know anything about him. Yeah, that's the pro. Like, Tom Holland as Spider Man, like, finds a way to react to things that actually feels less generic, you know? Yeah. Was like, whoa, that guy's a vulture. Like, you know, but then he, like, kind of makes, like, some quips or says something, like, kind of clever or connects it to something in his life. You have a metal arm? That is awesome, dude. You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> It, like, this felt, again, like a first draft of a script, like, you know, the Blue Beetle is flying through the air, and he says, whoa, oh my god, what's happening? Oh my god, what? And I'm like, have him, like, comment specifically on the situation. Yeah. Have him, like, say he something. He had no idea what he was hitting. I you get, know, it's yeah. all blue, it's all computers. Exactly. I, uh, they, you, you reminded me of something. Like, he... He gets home, and they don't say what he graduated from, which mm. annoyed me, because it tells me something about the character. Eventually, they mention and it, And then they, they say he was, pre, he was uh, pre-law. Pre he got a pre-law, which means he was going to be a lawyer. That was his plan. Yeah. That's a very serious and committed choice for someone who's dirt poor. Like, that's a yes. lot of school, and it's, a, and it's specifically someone who will fight for, like, uh, the, under the underdog, or whatever, yeah. the poor, the the disenfranchised, like minority groups. Yes. Where was that character? Also, like, his character being pre-law, like lawyers have a very, you know, way of like logically figuring yes. out situations yeah. and finding it through. And his, they're just like goofy. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't feel like a lawyer at all. No, even no. when he, Not even, even when his lawyer. physical power failed him, the suit, he yeah. and he had to resort to something else. There was nothing there for him to grab onto except for just like anger at family which seemed very dumb he's really lacking for any sort of like definable character trait other than i'm here and i'm confused mm -hmm. and i kind of like this girl and it's like it was just like the most generic like the most generic Again, this yeah. is why I feel like it's a kids like a kids movie. Is I'm like it's such a generic. It's a hero bit racist, actually. Going on, it's yeah. just fixated on like the Mexican <laughs> joke of you're the first one in our family who's gone to college. Wow, is it is that it? That's about you. Is that the only That's thing the only you got thing? going on? Yeah, I, God, he just felt like such a nothing character. And apparently, people really like that actor. I guess he's been in Stranger Things or something. Here's another one. Yeah, the suit tells him specifically that whatever he imagines, it can make. Mm. And he, the only thing he can imagine is a giant sword. Yes. Like, whatever you can imagine, I can create. Let's party. Oh, yeah! Nice choice. Why was that in the script then? I don't know. Just make the sword. Oh, <laughs> what can you do? I can make big swords. Like anything you can imagine. That's it? That was the only thing you can imagine is a right. big sword? Why it, not a bigger sword? <laughs> <laughs> and that feels like, again, another missed opportunity for something defining about him. Yes. Like, like the Green Lantern. Yes. Oh, you're an artist. Yeah, you can make anything. That's exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. Is like when Kyle Rayner becomes 
Green Lantern, he's like a former like comic yeah. artist or whatever. So his creations are more like elaborate and whatever. And yeah. then uh, I think Hal Jordan Green Lantern is always making like giant boxing gloves because he's a fucking dummy. <laughs> and like that's the best you can think of is like, I don't know, boxing glove. Bam, hit him. When I heard uh, that, I was like, wow, wouldn't it have been great if he was doodling stuff at the beginning of the movie? And yes. now he could like make it. If he was going to like art school and that influence or like, show him as like a big video game guy and then he's making, you know, uh, again, there's a lot of like give him a gavel for God's sake. Me, <laughs> yeah, anything that connects to him specifically. Instead, it's just look at my big sword. It's a Final Fantasy sword. I'm like, is that a Final Fantasy sword? It looked like, like the Final the Fantasy sword. Here? And that would have worked if you showed him playing Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Make him a wannabe <laughs> game designer. Say he went to game design college. He loves again, games. It's racist because they want to have like this underprivileged community that sends a kid to law school so yeah. he can fight for them. Like it always has to be law school or whatever the fuck else. Yeah. Uh, okay. So he's kidnapped and brought to court industries where they are going to download the data from the scarab embedded in him and right. that may or may not kill him. And regardless, Susan Sarandon's like, we're going to kill him, kill him anyway, anyway, she once we're done. Necessary. And she's generic, evil yeah, white lady. Yeah, yeah. So this is where we learn about the importance of familia, familia. Uh, is that the whole family father has just died. They go, there is no time for tears. We must go rescue uh, Hemi Reis. Yeah. And uh, they all, what do you call it? Jenny shows up and goes, I can help you guys. Yeah. They go to the mansion and get inside the uh, 80s Blue Beetle stuff. The Blue Beetle, whatever it's called, the bug ship. I don't actually remember what it's and called. And they all get like weapons from the 80s. From yes. The old Blue Beetle. Yes. Which are all really awesome. And mom never uses her gun. I don't oh, think mom yeah. killed any, shot anybody. No, she didn't. Everybody got a, everybody, everybody got a got moment a to in. use their weapon except mom, which felt and like plenty of times for mom. She could have absolutely got one shot off, on, especially on Susan Sarandon. Yeah, that was the time. That, that was the been. mom comes out. She goes, "How can you do that to my boy?" And you know, shoots her between the Donna eyes. Or sign something. of the cross. Yeah, like a desperado move. Pulled it out. Mom of a, did not case. get a moment. Uh, you can't do the familiar thing and not give everybody. There should have been the Die Hard moment when Al. Cowling shoots the guy, you know, but mom with the gun. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So they go to a uh, generic weird castle for some reason. They get in the bug ship and then there is a sequence of them flying the bug ship into the castle. And then again, as we've discussed, Brutally murdering <laughs> these paramilitary guys. Which was great. Which, dude, I, I have to say it again. Like, literally, the thing is just walking forward and just stomps yes. on a guy with its big, sharp right. metal leg through his, through his midsection. And then he, it comes up with the leg as the leg keeps going. <laughs> it flicks it off. And I think I went, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you did. I wrote it down. It was really, says, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh was, my God. I'm again, because the tone oh of the movie God. is like, this is a fun movie. Movie, and then dad has a heart attack and they start stabbing guys. He's playing lowrider and shit and then a guy gets impaled. Like, oh, jeez. But then in that same sequence where they just brutally murdered a guy by stepping on him, then it, they go, activate bug fart. Activate bug fart. And it goes back to being goofy again. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he spits up yeah. a blue fart cloud around the bug to <laughs> knock all the guys out. And I'm like, dude, you got to pick a through line. Either this thing is a murder machine or like a goofy kid's a farting joke. machine. It can't, yeah, you can't have a murder machine and a farting machine. I think it should be a farting machine. It should, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it should be a farting machine. <laughs> yes. For the sake you of this movie. shouldn't have stabbed that guy. No. The bug robot should be fun and it's like a fun ride. Every time it we went, not be oh murdering God. guys. <laughs> that was a bad choice for the filmmaker. <laughs> yes. I don't know how they watched the cut of this movie and didn't go, can we remove the soldier who gets violently oh. impaled? Can we show this to kids? Can you just cut right. out all, like, can you cut how they're dry humping at the end of the movie and just make it like a kiss? <laughs> you know how you talk about, like, you brought up the problem of decisions? Yeah. This movie needed to make decisions. It's like, I get, you know, like, the shot of the guy getting stepped on is a cool shot. I get it. Yeah. But that's not the movie you've been making for you like 90% of it. You don't see him have a heart attack and die <laughs> on the lawn with the mom screaming. No. And you don't need a sequence where the, <laughs> the United States Army blows up a Mexican child and his mother or whatever the fuck that is. But we're getting to that. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 
I think that's why I like this movie because it was so all over the place. It was so surprising. I was like, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> this is a movie that maybe needed another editing pass. I don't know, but it's perfect actually. I, it's fun. It's leave fun it, to see that. Let's see, you know, kids. you're watching Teletubbies, and then one of them pulls out a gun and shoots the other one. You're like, well, that himself. just fun. yeah, shoots himself. And you're like, well, I, did, I wasn't expecting that in the Teletubby movie, but I accept it now. <laughs> the Blue Beetle is yes. about to die, and he goes into this dreamland. He's land. inside the machine that is sucking the scarab, whatever. Yeah, and he's about in to the dreamland, his dad like tells him that he needs to accept his purpose as being the blue bean does that doesn't make any sense there's a very yeah there's a unexplained it's very unexplained where he basically goes the scarab chose you for a reason but he yeah. doesn't explain what that is they could have done they could have like done does the dad good. make contact with aliens in the afterlife <laughs> and they like explain to him what the scarab is what is this i thought it was the scarab lying to him like making this thing like contact with jody foster when it's like well i'm a, i'm here as your dad you're like all right whatever uh, yeah so but so then he comes back to life he comes back to life and then does he break out himself no, it's because the, his sister and the love interest planted bombs. Okay. And that disrupted. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, part. that disrupted uh, the energy so he could escape. So it gave him enough. The bombs go off, and that enables him to escape because yeah. it disrupts the Because he's protocol. in that, that Incredibles thing that holds yes. your arms he's and legs. Gyros- one of the gyroscope things you see at the mall, and he's spinning around. Uh, at this point, we get. Sanchez. Here's when it starts getting a little long. I'm okay. Like, All right, this could have been over by now. You so he yourself. he goes to the door to escape, and this is the scene where the Sanchez guy, who, again, as you explained, is the key scientist of this situation who should clearly yeah. be treated with incredible respect. He would be running it. By Susan Sarandon. Yeah. Instead, treats him like the hired help. Calls him the wrong Mexican name on purpose. Yes. Then has the moment where he lets Jaime escape Closes the door behind him. And he says, him. my name's not Sanchez. My name's not Sanchez. And then he says it's, and he lists like a bunch of Mexican names, like the reporter <laughs> from Married with Children. Yes. My name is Miranda Alessoya de la Cruz de la Randa. Oh, Sanchez, you moron. What are you doing? My name is not Sanchez. Your name is not Sanchez. I'm like, well, now you're... <laughs> Yeah, my name's not Sanchez. It was good enough. Yeah. Now you've made it a joke. Right. But now you're back to murdering someone. <laughs> I also, of course, was thinking of uh, what's the Rick and Morty joke where you go, "Hey, Glar, go play your piano. It's clear, and I don't work here anymore." I'm like, I don't again, that one. this is the first, uh, the one where he's putting the crew together, the heist crew. You need some people for a thing, Glar. My name's Glear these days. I play piano. Hey, Glear, play your piano. I quit. <laughs> and the name's Glar. I was like, again, this is a first draft of a script. The, yeah. that's not my name. My name's this. Okay, so now Jaime is being chased through the facility by... And Sanchez lets him out, and that's it. Sanchez lets him out, so and then her Sanchez, calling him the wrong Mexican name foiled her plan. Uh, yeah, and also it only Sanchez then dies, which again was another randomly brutal he death. Gets exploded. He gets exploded. His blood. <laughs> it's the shot of the window, and the window Flatter. gets covered in blood. And I'm like, again, I feel like that you did not need to. And it was like a fun fat guy too. We need yeah. to mention that he was like a goofy fat guy, and they exploded him to death. Okay, so he's then being chased by, oh, God, what was this guy's name? Scara. Uh, Nacho. Ignacio. Ignacio. His his uh, villain name is Carapax. Okay. Yeah. Car- like Carapace, like for a, from a scarab. Whatever. Oh. Anyway, I, I'm sure this is an actual Probably character when they call it from the Spanish. Comic. Carapax. Yeah. It might be Spanish. I don't Not know. Not with X at the end. Pax is never, I don't know. Uh, so, again, this character exists. This character is basically nothing. This character is. Bad guy. Yeah, but second, he's henchman. Henchman. Yeah. Uh, he is Susan Sarandon's little guy. Well, not little. She's like a huge military guy who she has been rebuilding. Uh, this movie had yeah. too much foreshadowing. Like, it was too obvious where things were going. Yeah. Okay, so, like, early on in the movie... She'd been experimenting on him. Yeah, she'd been experimenting on him, and he's clearly not happy about it. And I'm like, you're foreshadowing too much, where he's like, yeah. uh, all the things you've done to me. She's like, done to you? No, no, I've helped you, or whatever. Just think of how much suffering your body has been through. I'm aware of what you've done to him. What we've done, Ignacio... I'm on your 
Is it like the sexual or was uh, it something? a mommy thing? But then he had a family. His locket falls so out. That was his mom, though. That was a picture of him and his mom. But you don't know that. I no. thought it was his wife and his was, kid. I'm yeah. Why does he have a wife and a kid? All I know is the second that he went... You know, all these things you've done to me. I'm like, he's going to betray her at the end of the movie. You told like 30 minutes in the movie. I go, okay. well, now I know how the movie ends is that the big heavy guy is going to betray Susan Randon and kill her. Yeah. Which is going to happen in about two seconds. Okay, Big fight between Blue Beetle and Kara Pax. Yeah. A guy with no meaningful motivation. Uh, Oh, yeah. Red Beetle would have been a name. Whatever. A guy who, again, has no meaningful motivation other than his generic henchman. And I hate yeah. having the final fight against generic henchmen. Again, just put Susan Sarandon in the robot suit. Just do it. That would have been weird, though. I would have loved it. Who cares? She's the- I what? guess. <laughs> <laughs> have him die. Look, do a fake out. Have him get, like, defeated immediately. After he's defeated, she gets have in her go. Suit. And she's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. <laughs> and grabs whatever one man army corps thing and just jams it, jams into, her it neck, into her neck. Becomes a fucking mutant or something. Okay. Just do that. That would have at least, you got you to gotta knock her out. You can't ever. Just, I guess, yeah. That's what I would have done. Okay, so throughout the movie, he says it twice in the movie. I wrote the down family, the line. Your family will make you, your love of your I family wrote, makes you weak. <laughs> I think that's it's such a bad line that I don't think you even uh, need like, to look it up. I love my family. The love you feel for your family makes you weak. And then he has to repeat it again in the final line. He goes, I told you. <laughs> I told you. I'm like, again, first draft of the script, man. You got to go back in and find out. You can say that. There's just other ways of saying it that are are way less obvious. Your love of your family makes you weak. That's the point at which Uncle Rudy, what, throws a rock at him? Yeah, or a coconut. uh, No, because he was, well, maybe just George Lopez was selling it badly, but he's like, Holding these rocks as though they weigh nothing. Yeah. So I didn't know what they were. So he like, throws a rock a at him. Maybe that sure. he's throwing. He throws it at the bad guy, which distracts him for a second. It seems useless and pointless and not actually a good distraction. But then the bad guy zaps where he was, and Blue enraged. Beetle assumes that uh, Uncle Rudy is now dead. Yeah, his dad getting killed didn't really get to him, but no. And also, me as the audience, I go, "Well, he's not dead. I mean, why do you think he's dead? Because you didn't see him get shot through the chest or something. He could be it okay. was not earned. No, but that causes Jamie Reyes to uh, go berserker mode. Yeah, uh, gets Carapax on the ground, punching him, punching him, about to stab him through the face, and then the scarab teaches him a lesson or the scarab something. Scarab plays all the bad guys' memories. Oh God, yeah, okay. So she goes, you have already neutralized him. You do not need to continue. He's like, he killed my uncle. He killed my dad. She's like, I have scanned his memories. Let's watch a montage. I unlocked his memories. Let me show you. And then forces him to watch a montage of a little Mexican shot. Yeah, of the invasion (laughs) of Bay of Pigs. (laughs) Granada. Some random a little boy in his Hispanic country being using using actual like file footage of American bombings. Bomber is bombing Nicaragua or something. <laughs> and he's a little boy. So you're and watching he's coming a, home like a ma- South Park episode. Me, Madre. Hi, mommy. I love you, Madre. Yes. And then the bombs are having goes, Oh no, mommy! No, and she goes, mommy. No, get back! Bomb! And just explodes <laughs> in a fireball. Yeah. I go. What? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I couldn't believe that we cut away just from that. Yeah, just make him a bad guy. Just make him a bad guy. I don't need this. Uh, well, we had to learn why he had the locket. Again, it, not like, really. This movie has so many cliches. Really, he has a locket <laughs> of his fucking mother How that he, he get carries a picture her after yeah, she was where did incinerated. He get a fucking locket picture. He was a child slave and like a <laughs> soldier. <laughs> I guess he got enlisted into child being a child soldier by Susan Sarandon. Oh yeah, that so was. How long uh, has she been out there? What picking how many up child slaves? Is she how have? old is that guy? That guy looked like fifty. So she met him when he was five. Yes. How, so how she old is Susan at- Sarandon? Wow, really? She's like, like 70 something? So she was in her 20s when she f- grabbed a child soldier, I guess. And she's been weirdly raising weirdly him and raising grooming him, him. And they never had sex. <laughs> That's what you're saying? Yeah, come on. <laughs> you needed to make it clear they've been banging. She groomed him. She literally I thought him. that their energy was weirdly sexual. It was making me uncomfortable every time they talked. It, it was 
bad. Anyway, this guy who for the past 50 years has been slavishly devoted to this woman has a flat. I guess the scarab unlocked his memories is what we're supposed to believe. Oh, yeah, he does say something like yeah. that, even though. No, I remember. Yeah, I remember everything. So he kills her. Yeah. By overloading his cortex. Which I guess maybe it's insinuating that she bombed his village. I guess that's what I'm supposed to take away from that. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That wasn't I don't know if that's important. That wasn't explicit. I mean, I guess she just basically took advantage of him and forced him to be her little yeah. cyborg puppet for the last fifty years. Uh so he takes her and then drags her into a fire and explodes himself. Yeah. Which did not feel... Oh, also, at this point, she has Jenny Cord and a helicopter, and something happens with magic bubble gum that I did not understand. Oh, yeah, that's like a gadget that the lady had. Yeah, before the they get on had. the beetle ship, she's like, that's magic bubble gum, don't touch it, my dad made it's that. It's not what you think it is. I'm like, what I don't know what... It is. Does that mean I think it's a weapon <laughs> or bubble gum? <laughs> she chews what do it, I think it is? She chews it on the helicopter, and then it expands. It turns into that stuff in Demolition Man where they can get a, in a wreck and survive. Okay. Foam. So the helicopter explodes, but they're covered in bubble gum foam, so they yeah. don't. Yeah. So Jamie learns does not kill. He's now bonded with the scarab, which maybe has his dead dad living inside it or something. The bad guy explodes. And the robot speaks Spanish now. That yeah. was the best part of the movie. <laughs> Again, okay. The movie's <laughs> biggest flaw <laughs> is that the robot is not in the. This like needed to be about his relationship with the robot. robot. You gotta you gotta go balls yes. to the wall on that robot. If anything, get rid of Jenny Cord, and it's just about him. And it, yeah, make it terminate. It is Terminator, except the Terminator's attached to you. Yeah, the Terminator's like, I want to kill. I want to kill everything. And it's like, what if? Wait. Have I told you about tacos? And it's like, what are these tacos? <laughs> and then he eats a taco, and the scarab goes, Oh, this is replenishing my but it, like my shit, cerebral like, units. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what this movie needed to be. And instead, the robot, the scarab Ooh, is like, These are too spicy. Ew, I am sensing you should not eat that. It contains. Uh, deadly spice. No, we actually we cut up the peppers and it, it's yeah. actually fine in small amounts. Oh, this gives us a, a strange amount of energy, and now I can uh, like that would have been so yeah, much better. Good. Instead, it's him. Like the family's fine, but you needed to teach teaching the scarab to be Mexican would have been fucking hilarious. It would have given like a reason why that alien scarab exists at all. Yes. Why is it here, dude? I'm I'm actually like so. See, that's why I'm disappointed in this movie. Upset about There's it. There's such a better movie here of teaching this so alien does thing that that's attached exist to you in the comic about Mexico. The scarab is attached to him and it talks does to him. Does Mexico exist in the comic? I don't. I mean, well, obviously Mexico exists in this universe. They okay. talk about Mexico. Is it from space, Mexico? No, it's from is like there a space, south space. Of space. It's from oh. some alternate universe or something. But so it exists. The uh, scarab. The scarab exists in the comics. Here? Yeah, wh who made yeah, it? I don't know. Whatever. Why is Green Lantern's ring on it? Well, we actually know why. Because of the core. Because the core. <laughs> and they have a giant lantern. What is the scarab? About? I don't actually know. Honestly, so Jaime, like the whole Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, I don't know a lot about. I just know he showed oh. up. They killed Ted Cord, which I don't like. I think they brought him back to life. Mm. And they're like, well, now there's a Hispanic kid and he's taken over as the Blue Beetle. I'm like, well, don't make him the Blue Beetle. Make him like the the Mexican beetle or something yeah. you know I don't know why they got to use the same the beetle name. azul a beetle azul yeah. exactly azulio uh, if this movie was about a kid teaching a unfeeling alien AI the importance of, of familia dancing. and dancing <laughs> and you know having a potluck here's or one positive thing I'll say yes. in the Spider Man movie the new one mm. um the amount of like I poppying that his mom was doing in that movie yes. drove me insane. The whole I, oh no, papi. <laughs> oh mijo, oh mijo, I and then pues I will do it like this. Eso es imposible. Oh, Calmate, mami. Eso no es my fault. ¿Qué, qué es eso que esto no es mi fault? Tú estás tomando una clase en español. So I was worried that there would be a lot of that, but there wasn't. It I was so actual I started Mexican a tally people. on my phone because I was like, they're gonna say familia a hundred times, and then they didn't. I was like surprised. Yeah. I was like, they started saying, they said family uh, a number of times, but uh -huh. they only said familia like once or twice. Too much restraint. Too much restraint. The restraint in that area was good, but then it was everywhere. And in the movie, uh, Jenny Cord obviously buys their house back, which was set on fire. They have to rebuild it. But it wasn't their house. That's what, like, the biggest yeah. payoff was going to be the landlord is fucked because his house got destroyed. But then they all <laughs> come back and say... Oh, what are we gonna do about our house? Like, well, wait. Yeah, it wasn't their house. Was, they didn't own, own it. The house. They were the guy renting who it. Tried to screw you. Is now getting screwed. This is fantastic. Mm. But then they 
Drop the ball! We didn't get the shot of the landlord crying because yeah. the Mexican family won in the end. Some guy coming out, oh my god, what happened to my hat, you know? <laughs> I don't know why we're using that voice for the landlord. <laughs> like, that's There's like literally a Mexican any voice. other voice we could use. Oh, oh my god, I can't believe oh what's happening. Nice. No, no, no. No, no. It's any other any other type of landlord <laughs> would be That's better. Italian. It's Italian. That's an Italian voice we're doing. Oh, my meatballs. Oh, my meatballs. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Jenny Cord saves the house. Uh, Jamie or Jaime, whatever the fuck. Then, uh, again, a very sexual moment. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so the robot again proving that the robot should have existed throughout more of the film goes I sense a big boner in your pants <laughs> and uh, it doesn't say uh, like you that you can do the voice well, but I can I do can't. it if it's the scarab doing it the scarab uh, could okay. be Jewish that's fine <laughs> uh, and then he transforms in front of all his family and neighbors where I go well that seems what does he care yeah I guess whatever it's one of those for I white am people the blue that, be- yeah, yeah white people have secret identities <laughs> Mexican Mexicans people whatever Flies off into the sky with his new love interest. There's a lot of uh, funny bits of in that movie that they that ran through the movie. Yeah, like pretending that he, he was when all his family acted like he was uh, the woman in their soap opera who's poor that and was, Mary's yeah. rich. And they were every time <laughs> that she would show up, they would sing the theme song and act like assholes. <laughs> and all the stuff with the family was great when yeah. they were all together. When they were together, uh, but the sister was just. Horrible. Yeah, she did not. I get what they were doing, but that actress just was. You want her to be unlikable, likable, you know, where it's like, ah, she's kind of a jerk, but you yeah. know, lovable way. And so it's kind of like, great. Hey, okay. fuck you, you fucking chubby bitch. Yeah. Leave, leave your brother alone. He's doing shit. <laughs> shut your mouth. Yeah, shut your fucking mouth. Uh, we also get a mid see a credits teaser showing us that Ted Cord is alive. Very exciting for me. Oh, yeah. By activating his computer system, it has somehow contacted Ted Cord. So, yeah. uh, not that we're getting a sequel <laughs> to this movie, because apparently this movie is uh, tracking to do terribly. People uh, are just bombing. done. People are just done with DC movies. I think people are done with superhero movies, and DC movies are the worst superhero movies of all. So, they're just like, I'm not even going to take a chance, or I'm just going to wait for this to show up on streaming in literally a month, because that's about how long it takes. Do you know Indiana Jones is already coming to streaming? That makes sense. We just saw that movie. Yeah, but they got to get it out before people like forget completely forget exists. about it. It's crazy yeah. how quickly they give up on these things. It was a very DC movie in that the tone was, it was all a very over Marvel the place. movie. <laughs> well, the D, like the good to. parts were Marvel, but the DC part is or all the ones that I've seen yeah. is like no 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 um no consistent uh, concept of like tone and death. Everything yeah. is like wildly different scales, inappropriate jokes and comedy. This was close to having violence. a consistent tone with some yeah. very clear outliers. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stab this guy. No, not now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, great movie for kids. Great movie for the Mexicans. What do you think the biggest problem in it was? What's the biggest problem in Blue Beetle? I've t- I will say again, the Scarab needed to be a character. You can't tell me he has an yeah. AI in his suit. You can't tell me he has a Jarvis and not have Jarvis like play any part in the movie. And this and, and this is even like way more important than Jarvis. Like literally Yeah, it's merging it's, with his brain. It's merging with his brain. It needed to be its own Both character. Both of them needed to be characters. Yes. That learned like like a buddy cop movie yes. kind of. I understand that they wanted to focus on familia. Yeah. But the scarab was like just missing. It, it was like a, almost an afterthought. You could have gotten rid. Honestly, the scarab could have just been a thing that doesn't talk and it would have been the same movie. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. fact that it talks at all is like a cock tease. Yeah. What is your biggest problem in Blue Beetle? Uh, grandma had the biggest tits. It's a big problem. You got all these. It's a big problem. Young Latina actresses. Yeah. Even mom. Jenny Card was a good looking gal, though. Well, she could add bigger tits. Grandma, though. And oh Susan God. Sarandon doesn't show the goods anymore. And that oh, is a really? travesty. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I thought it was good. I think it was fine. Sorry, I don't think the movie was good. I think it was fun. Yeah. I had a fun time. I laughed a couple parts. This is not something I would ever watch again. This mm-hmm. is something, unless like, I don't know, like my, you know, young nephews were visiting or something. I'd be like, yeah, let's put on Blue Beetle, something to watch. Yeah. It's kind of funny, whatever. Your niñitos. Yeah, my <laughs> nino, little niños <laughs> or whatever the fuck. Coming over. Uh, but other than that. Uh, I hope it catches on and there's like uh, Edward James almost runs it uh, every year. 
at his film festival. <laughs> we'll see. But this was not on par with like a Spider-Man. And that's the problem is that's the mark you're looking to hit. Yeah. Uh, you didn't hit that mark. You would have hit that mark. I think you would have hit that mark yeah. if the yeah. scarab so close. was funny. It was so close. Make it Terminator 2. Teach it stupid Latin <sighs> phrases or whatever the fuck. Yeah. When you I've say, checked my database. <laughs> salsa is a type of dancing. <laughs> no, Scarab. Salsa is also a delicious food you can eat with tortillas. I am learning about your culture. When I say this, you say por favor. <laughs> por favor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the movie Jamie, I want. It's Jaime. It's Jaime. How do you say Jaime? Jaime. Jaime. No, Jaime. No, you've got to roll your R's. What <laughs> do you, how can I da, roll da, 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 a da. letter? <laughs> burr, burr. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> so much opportunity there. I mean, I, maybe it's just because we're fans of like. The no, the robot should have been Susan Sarandon is an evil white woman. Mm -hmm. The robot should have been a good white woman. Yeah, like wanting a, to learn about wanting the to learn about the culture. <laughs> Tell me more, Jaime. Wow, that's so interesting. What is Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> <laughs> that just means the fifth of May, silly scarab. It's a celebration of our Latin heritage. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll try one beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the problem is me and you grew up in like the eighties and nineties with all these great like robot movies like Short Circuit and shit. Number five, look out. Say, Pilgrim, that likes a part in my hair. And we're like I mean, that's just the perfect movie. Just make we that. We grew up with movies about friendship, not yeah. this familia Fuck shit. Fuck this familia <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, again, and for a movie that is, like, clearly, even, like, the all the title fonts are, what, like, late 80s, early 90s themed and all the technology or whatever. Yeah, the music is Why 80s, Why are you too. not borrowing from these classic? I mean, even the Revenge of the Nerds, didn't they build a robot at some point? I'm sure that yeah. they did. <laughs> <laughs> you guys made a blowjob robot? I don't remember what happens. I think I mean, even like the Police Academy had a robot. <laughs> Tackleberry what? Rocky had a fucking robot <laughs> yes. And that was great Do you know he did a new cut of that movie And he took the robot out of it Why would he make a new cut of that movie I don't know but uh What's his name Stallone recut Rocky 3 <sighs> And he took out Polly's birthday robot Which is the best part <laughs> of the movie dumb. Thanks honey. You're welcome Nice song. It's my favorite. You're the greatest. See you, sport. See you. Oh, Paul, who taught her to talk like that? She loves me. Huh. I'll say this. Wait for it to show up on streaming. That's my bottom line. Oh, uh, yeah. Unless you and your familia <laughs> are. Uh, this is a family movie. I mean, it's a kid's movie at the end of the day. That's if what it feels like. you want to know what Mexican culture is like, don't watch give it. it no. <laughs> give it a fire this up on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to see. I mean, black people showed up like crazy for Black Panther. I wonder if the Hispanic community can show up for uh, Blue Beetle. You I do if think. Get, is, uh, never mind. I, I, well, I was just going to say, I think, you know. How big is that market segment? Will the Hispanics come on out? I don't think they, I don't know. Uh, what it, I think they see like Selena, the movie. Yeah. See, What's a Hispanics? That would be a bigger thing. I don't know if they see like Blue Beetle. They also, the marketing didn't make it that clear. Like Bl Black Panther, you knew. You're like, this is the black movie, man. You got to see it. <laughs> yeah. And now it's kind of like this Hail Mary pass for Blue Beetle where they're like, uh, Mexicans, all the Mexicans, get yeah, in here. You're I haven't seen it. one low rider with a Blue Beetle painted on it. You could have, you could have painted, yeah, you could have uh, marketed there this movie. There should have been one in the theater. <laughs> they should have sponsored mm -hmm. low rider contests. They should have had Cerveza drinking festivals with the Blue Beetle going around in a sombrero and handing out. Especially Special Avion, yeah, with the Blue Beetle crossover. Just give out that fucking corn and cover it in blue mayonnaise or whatever <laughs> you fucking weirdos eat. Your fucking uh, what is it, El Elote? Yeah, Elote. That's it. Elote. It's, it's pretty tasty. I'm not gonna <clears> lie. <throat> uh, so yeah, I would say wait for it on streaming. Flawed movie. I mean, it's not. It's not offensively bad. It's just like it's. It's fine. It's a fine movie. But it does. Yeah. It did feel to me like a kids' movie that needed another draft to, to like get through to those. Family makes you be strong. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like it's fun, bad. It's fun. The mistakes bad. make it fun instead yeah. of tedious. Like, and I'll say, you know, as a DC Comics fan, I did like the respect because I was worried they weren't going to mention Ted Cord at all. 
that you know they weren't going to talk about any of the Blue Beetle lore. So just the fact that they included any of that, yeah. Dick is thank now God they, thank God they appeased you guys <laughs> and all your. Well, comic why book make the shit. comic book fucking movie if you're not going to do a little something for the fans? Oh, I can't wait for Ted Cord to show up. Oh, whatever. I don't think they have the balls to put Ted Cord <laughs> in this one. <laughs> whatever. Is he a Mexican too? No, he's a white guy. His daughter is. Brazilian, Brazilian, yeah. Brazilian. You know, they had to have. You can't, you can't put white ladies in the. Well, yeah, you could have put a white lady in there. Mexican guy gets a white lady girlfriend. That's progressive. Not really. No. No. Blue Beetle now available in theaters from Warner Brothers Pictures. Uh, wait for it to show up on HBO Max. That's my bottom line. <laughs> That's been the that's the biggest review <laughs> that's that the you'll big, ever see. That's been of the it. biggest review. <laughs> not the of biggest Blue problem Beetle. reviews. Not biggest problem reviews because that's the biggest problem in Blue Beetle. That doesn't know because that's a different format. It's the biggest review. Uh huh. Maybe I'll change the name. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I think somebody's scrolling through YouTube and they uh -huh. go, all right, the dumpster review, <laughs> the, the shit pants review. The biggest review. Ooh, the biggest wow. review. Wow, that sounds interesting. Uh, all right. If someone's got a better name, let it's me know. It's fine. Fine. It is fine. It's fine. Speaking of the biggest problems, guys, don't forget, if you liked this, you're going to love our podcast, The Biggest Problem in the Universe. You can listen to that at biggestproblem.show or youtube.com slash biggestproblem. If you love comic books, guys, my comic book, Super Killer, is still available on Indiegogo. Uh, get on the list to make sure you get a copy of the first edition before we go to print. Thanks for listening. We love you. And once again, this has been the biggest review. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. A oh, flu beetle. <laughs> Fuck da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Go Mexico. It's all about family, Dick. It's about La Raza. That's what it should have been. It should have been. And then you should have seen this montage of like painted murals of Jesus Christ <laughs> and like getting whipped by a sandal. I appreciated the the and, religious like, imagery, Home Depot guys. Yeah, you know when they thought like, he was possessed and Grandma's doing the sign oh, of the that cross. Was funny. Yeah, There's a lot of funny moments. There's some funny stuff. You in can't there. say that for a lot of movies. No. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye.